All right, we're going to go ahead and begin this morning. So hello, welcome. My name is Alec, and I am a California State Park interpreter here at Rancho Del Oso in the beautiful Big Basin Redwood State Park in Santa Cruz, roughly. Technically, we're in the city of Davenport, California, population 400, small town on the California coast in between San Francisco and Santa Cruz. And some of you may be tuning in from Santa Cruz. You may be familiar with the area. Some of you may not. So I just wanted to orient you um, with a quick California geography lesson. So this is the great state of California. And down below in the southernmost portion of the state, we have SD for San Diego. Go a little bit farther north, LA. And the San Francisco Bay is this inlet here. And San Francisco is right on the tip of that peninsula. And then Santa Cruz is farther down. And Santa Cruz is on the northern tip of the Monterey Bay. So that's where we are currently. So you are here today for a Junior Rangers program. Now, Junior Rangers programs are designed for 7 to 12-year-olds for best enjoyment and learning. However, you can be younger than 7. You can be older than 12. I don't really care as long as you're here to enjoy, learn, have some fun, learn about uh, California State Park. That's what we're here today for. So as we're waiting, we're going to do some uh, test tests into the, the Q&A box, into the, um, like the raising your hand feature, all that. Um, before that, I just wanted to say this is the second Junior Rangers program here at Rancho Del Oso. The first one we did a couple of weeks ago, and that one was on owls. So some of you may have met our friend Ernie and our other friend Bernie, the great horned owl and barn owl. Um, and, but the special thing about today is that you get to meet some live creatures, some live snakes, which is cool. It's pretty cool. So we're going to test that raising hand feature. So raise your hand if you're here. I want to see how many people... We have here today so i can get an idea of our audience all right um <clears throat> we're gonna okay maybe some of you are a little shy we're gonna play a game and uh this is a uh, practice raising your hand so i'm gonna give you two options for things and then you're gonna raise your hand for the option you prefer more so the first one is um if you'd rather be a deep sea diver or an astronaut, a deep sea diver or an astronaut, raise your hand if you'd rather be a deep sea diver and raise your hand if you'd rather be an astronaut. Ellie, right on. Alex Joyce would be an astronaut. Okay, another couple of raised hands. Allison also said astronaut. Yeah, I think to go to space would be pretty sweet. All right, second question. Would you rather go back in time uh, to the past or forward to the future? Back in time to the past or forward to the future? Raise your hand if you'd rather go back in time to the past. Check out what once was. Maybe check out the dinosaurs. Maybe um, go to your favorite historical era. Meet some historical figure you've always wanted to meet. All right. Nice, Lucia. And raise your hand if you would rather venture to the future, to the unknown. Anything could happen. Ellie, okay, a couple of people. This is a tough question, folks. It really is. I think I would probably want to check out the future if I could come back to today. If I had the option, the opt out. Okay, um, the third one, superpowers. Would you rather have the ability to fly or to be invisible ability to fly or be invisible okay raise your hand if you'd rather have the ability to fly raise your hand if you'd rather have the ability to fly okay and raise allison raise your hand if you'd rather have the ability to be invisible <clears throat> raise your hand if you'd rather have the power to be invisible okay now, uh, here's an interesting one relevant to our topic today. Okay, so the options for this are if you think snakes are cool or if snakes are creepy and weird and disgusting. So raise your hand if you think snakes are cool. 
All right, nice. Got some folks. I hope so because you're tuning in today. But it's okay if raise your hand if you think snakes are kind of creepy, kind of weird, kind of disgusting. It's okay. You can you can raise your hand. You can be honest. Some people as well, and that is okay. Let me tell you a secret. Two years ago, I thought the same thing. I thought snakes were creepy. I thought they were weird, and I thought they were disgusting. Because every time I go out to nature and I would encounter one, I just, I didn't like. I mean, snakes in our culture have a stigma about them, right? Um, I know in uh, a major religion, for instance, uh, a snake is um, pictured as the ultimate evil creature. Um, snakes are often portrayed in, in media like film and books as things that are maybe lying or deceiving um, or evil. But it turns out snakes are just regular animals, like your dog, like your cat, like your pet rat, like your pet pig, whatever you have. Um, and humans too, we're animals. They're just regular animals trying to live their way uh, through the world. And they're pretty valuable to our habitat. So we're gonna learn a lot about snakes today. Okay, right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try out the Q&A box as we're waiting for more people to come. So we're gonna try the Q&A box. So I want you to ask me a question, any appropriate question, like my favorite color, my favorite animal, my favorite TV show, my favorite planet. Um, just ask me a question, just so I can see that the Q&A is working. So there should be a QA and a um, little icon. It just says Q ampersand A. And then I just wanna see if people can ask questions because we're gonna be using both the raising the hand feature and the Q&A feature as well for our day today. So you can just ask any, uh, any question as long as it's appropriate. Okay, great question, Colleen. What's your favorite California State Park besides where I'm at and or National Park? Excellent question. My favorite California State Park besides um, here, uh, Cal uh, Big Basin Redwoods, Rancho Del Oso is probably Anza Borrego Desert State Park down in Southern California. It is an incredible state park that's very different from where we are. So this place is lush and green and has an ocean breeze and there's a lot of pine trees. Anza Borrego is desert and it has caves and it's huge. So I would always encourage people to go to Anza Borrego if they have not gone. My favorite national park is probably... Mm, Zion National Park in Utah. Incredible. Okay, good question, Colleen. Ellie, what is my favorite animal? My favorite animal is a turtle, also a reptile like our snake friends. Lucia, what type of snake are we going to be talking about? Mm, good question. You're going to meet, hopefully, two kinds of snake snakes today. Live snakes that I'm going to introduce you. Lucia also asked, how old am I? How old do you think I am? Okay, I'm 26 years old. <laughs> All right, before we begin, a few jokes, a few jokes to, to begin, uh, to kick us off. What do snakes do after they fight? They hiss and make up. <laughs> you know, like, you know, they say like kiss and make up. Snakes hiss and make up. Um, okay, uh, what... What do you get when you cross a snake and a pie? A python. <laughs> okay. All right. So we are going to begin now. So my name is Alec. I work for California State Parks. I'm an interpreter here, which means I primarily talk about uh, and translate the language of nature and, and culture to the people of California or people around the world. This is a junior rangers program, primarily tailored for 7 to 12 year olds. But if you're here younger and you're here older, that's totally cool. Um, so I'm in uh, Big Basin Redwoods State Park in the Santa Cruz District um, in Central Coast of California. Um, this park was the first California State Park. In fact, it was just used to be called California Redwood Park way back in the day. It is the traditional and contemporary home of um, what is wider known as the Ohlone culture of um, indigenous native people who lived in this area, specifically the Karoste people. 
um, who lived just north of here and the Katoni people who lived just south. Where I'm at, the Waddell Valley is where these two groups sort of met. Um, the halfway line, if you will. So this place is known for redwoods. Redwoods is in our name. Uh, banana slugs, hiking, um, super beautiful views, and variety of wildlife. So there's kind of two parts of the park. There's the mountains part, which on a hot day like today, you'd probably rather be here on the coastal part because it's very, very mild. It's ocean breeze, 65 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Um, so it's, it's a pretty sweet spot to be. So today's program is on state snakes. After this program, um, I'm going to be emailing those of you who stay the majority of the program, a digital stamp saying you're here. You can only get the digital stamp if, and only if you were here for most of the time, just like if this program was in real life, if you walked off like 10 minutes in, then I wouldn't give you your pride prize. So you have to stay the whole time or just about the whole time. Um, in order to earn your prize. The program's going to be about 30 minutes. Um, in a typical junior ranger program, we'd probably be going on a hike, probably playing games and stuff. Um, but since this is COVID and we're doing this remotely, we're going to engage these. We're going to engage our brains. I'm going to try to make as much transaction as possible, as much back and forth as I can to keep you engaged. The most important quality of a junior ranger is to be curious, okay, curiosity. What is curiosity? Well, have you ever heard of a famous character named Curious George? I said this in my last junior rangers program, so hopefully some of you know. Curious George is a monkey who has a lot of life experiences because he asks a lot of questions and he goes on adventures. And so I want you to ask a lot of questions, practice being curious, wonder, examine, make observations. So without further ado, I would like you to meet our first snake friend. Now, <clears throat> some of you might recognize what kind of snake this is, and I'm going to request that you keep that information to yourself because we're gonna reveal that at the end. But this first activity, what I want you to do is I'm gonna give you real quick 20 seconds to go grab a pen or pencil and a piece of paper. So something to write with and a piece of paper, two things. Something to write with and a piece of paper. You have 20 seconds to go grab those things, okay? 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 12, ah, gosh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, what? Did you make it back? Okay. So here's what I'd like you to do. Um, as I'm showing you the snake, I'd like you to sketch, to draw the snake. Okay. Um, and then you can share it with us on our Instagram um, or our Facebook as well. It's Rancho Del Oso. Rancho Del Oso. That's R-A-N-C-H-O space D-E-L space O-S-O, -O, which means Rancho because there used to be a lot of grizzly bears here. Um, so you're gonna try sketching the snake, but I also want you to do another thing while you're sketching the snake. And that is, I want you to write in the Q&A box things that you notice, observations, okay? Um, so if you're with someone else watching today, talk to them about what you notice. It could be um, size of the snake, so the shape of the snake, um, if it's thin, if it's thicker, um, it's texture, it's features. Um, and an example would be like, um, if you're making observations about Alec, about me, um, use the phrase, I noticed that. So I noticed that Alec has pretty long hair. I noticed that Alec has, um, uh, white, but tan skin. <laughs> um, I noticed that Alec likes to use his hands when he talks. So I just described some physical features, some color, um, size, as well as behavior with my hands. So I want you to also do that as well with the snake when I introduce you to the snake. Okay, so start noticing things and then writing it down in the Q&A box and then I'll announce it to everyone. So I want you to draw the snake as well as 
type in observations, things that you notice, and drawing the snake will help you make those observations. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce you to our snake. All right. This is Bandit. All right, this is Bandit. Bandit is a snake. Now, go for it. Go ahead and make some observations and type them in the Q&A box whenever you get them. So things like Bandit's color, Bandit's pattern, the way Bandit moves, okay, behavior, things that Bandit is, is doing. Bandit size. Okay, looks like someone asked, is Bandit slimy? What do you think? It's, I'm gonna hold Bandit pretty close. Does Bandit look slimy to you? Okay, Allison says Bandit has spots, nice. Okay, Isaac says Bandit has a black and white pattern. Yes, excellent observation about color. And Allison made a great observation about pattern. Allison says he does not look slimy. Okay. And by the way, Bandit is a she. Okay. There we go. Pardon me if I mispronounce your name, but Talay or Talai says Bandit is long. Bandit is long. Let's see if we can stretch Bandit out to show you just, just how long Bandit is. Pretty long. Probably longer than my arm. Okay, Isaac says, it looks about three feet. Okay, great observation. How about some observations about Bandit's behavior? What is Bandit doing right now? Anyone notice anything about Bandit's mouth? What's going on there? Oh, it's actually Zahara or Zahara. I put them home. Okay. Sorry, Zahara or Zahara. What else do we notice about Bandit? I noticed that. Okay. So it looks like Midori, you asked a great question. And I want you to hang on to that question for our next section because we are going to be asking questions in our next section. But I love that curiosity. Okay. Zahara says his, her tongue is sticking out. That is a very good observation. Nice, sticking out. Mm -hmm. All right, any more observations? Things that you notice about Bandit? What's Bandit doing on my arm? Okay, Juliet asked a question about Bandit. Love the questions. Hold on to the questions until the next section. Right now, we're just we're just saying things, typing in things that we notice. Isaac said he is wrapping around my arm. Yeah, Bandit is wrapping around my arm. Bandit's so strong. Okay, a few more observations about Bandit, maybe. Okay. Here's, a que here's something, um, a question to you that you can observe. Is Bandit's tail as wide as Bandit's head? Is Bandit's color on Bandit's back the same as the color on Bandit's stomach? Okay, let's go with one more observation. Okay, Lucia says yes, a little darker on Bandit's back than on Bandit's stomach. 
different patterns going on there. Hmm. All righty. Y'all made some great observations. And now we're going to move on to the next part about things that you are curious about. So some of you already have some good questions and I want you to continue that. So for instance, going on about what we were talking about with, with me, with Alec, as an example, things you're curious about, you could say, mm, I'm curious about how long Alec has been growing out his hair. I'm curious if um, Alec spends a lot of time out in the sun. I'm curious if uh, Alec's family members also use their hands a lot. Okay. So now we're going to, I'm going to ask you guys to ask questions, things that you are curious about. Okay. Zahara says, does she bite? What do y'all think? Does Bandit bite? Sia says, what does, what does Bandit bite? eat okay these are great keep them coming isaac says how old is bandit excellent question say hello bandit Okay. Julia also says, how old is Bandit? Yeah, more questions about Bandit. What do you, what do you wonder about Bandit? Maybe Bandit's habitat. Where could you find a snake like Bandit in the wild? That's one thing I might be curious about. Um, I might be curious about how they uh, reproduce. Um, if they have like, if they lay eggs, um, I might also be curious about, um, why Bandit has this black and white, uh, stripe pattern. Um, someone asks, where did we get Bandit? Someone says, is Bandit poisonous? These are awesome questions. Good job. All right, maybe, maybe one or two more questions. And then we're going to answer these questions ourselves. We're going to go around and see if we can answer these questions. I'm going to give some true, true or false statements about Bandit. Then y'all are going to answer. Okay. Now's the time when you're going to be typing in true and false responses about Bandit. Okay. So... Um, true or false? This was regarding someone's question about what Bandit eats. True or false? Bandit loves to eat fruits and vegetables. Bandit loves to eat fruits and vegetables. Okay, so Harris says true. Lucia says false. Julia says false. Isaac says false. Allison says false. Ellie says false. True or false? Bandit loves to eat fruits and vegetables. All right, that's false. Bandit is a carnivore, and carnivores only eat meat. So primarily things that Bandit likes to eat are rodents, so like mice and rats, and also Bandit likes like maybe a, a bunny. Uh, Bandit uh, might go after other reptiles. Okay. So Bandit is a carnivore. So Bandit likes eating meat. Already. Um, Next, true or false? Um, you can only find Bandit, a snake like Bandit, you can only find a snake like Bandit living in the forest. True or false? 
you can only find a snake-like bandit living in the forest. Lucia says true. Zahara says false. You can only see, you can only find a snake-like bandit living in the forest. True or false? Juliet, false. Allison, true. Ellie, false. Isaac, false. So bandit can be found in the forest. Bandit can also be found in the mountains. Bandit can also be found in the desert. Bandit can also be found in meadows. Bandit can be found in a lot of different places. All right. Bandit is an extremely versatile, adaptable snake. You can live in a lot of places. Okay. True or false? Bandit is venomous. True or false? Bandit is venomous. Bandit has venom that can, that can harm other creatures. Anessa says false. Ellie says false. Isaac says false. Y'all are so convinced. <laughs> Sahara, false because you're holding him. Okay. <laughs> Allison, false. Juliet, false. Totally. <laughs> Lucia says false. Okay, yes, I can't fool y'all. I wouldn't be this comfortable with the snake if it was venomous. All right. Now, does anyone know what kind of snake bandit is? All right. Since bandit is a is a girl, she's a female. Bandit is a king snake, but I like to say queen snake. So Bandit is what, what we call a California king snake. All right. And the reason these are called king snakes is because they are the top dogs when it comes to snakes. They can actually uh, attack and eat a rattlesnake. They can also withstand a bite from a rattlesnake. So a snake with venom, like a rattlesnake, if it were to bite Bandit, Bandit is what we call venom resistant, which means that Bandit will fare pretty well and survive if it gets bit by a rattlesnake with venom. So they are they can take down rattlesnakes, which is why we call them king snakes. Okay, everyone say goodbye to Bandit. Wave bye to Bandit. You're going to meet our next snake. All right, Bandit, we're going back. All righty, y'all. Say hello to our next snake. All righty. The snake is a little bit different. And again, we're going to start over with observations. Okay, so everyone say hello to Kenny. This is Kenny. Kenny is a boy. Alrighty, so we're going to go off with observations starting from the beginning. So like we did with Bandit, we are going to say things that we notice. Remember things that you notice with Bandit were like, Bandit is black and white. Bandit has stripes. Bandit is long. Um, Bandit uh, does that thing with her tongue. Um, Bandit like to crawl all over me. Now I would like you to do the same thing with Kenny. Okay, so let's see those observations. Kenny has spots. Great job, Allison. Nice. So we got his pattern. What about color? What about size? What about Kenny's behavior? Okay, Isaac also echoed that. Kenny has brown and white spots. Nice. I also want you to see the shape of like Kenny's head compared to what we were saying before. Okay, Allison says he is shorter than Bandit and thinner. Good observation, Allison. Awesome. Things that you notice. Oops. Okay, Lucia says he's brown, white, and black colors. Isaac says his belly is white. These are great observations, guys.
one thing that I always try to show people is check out Kenny's head and Kenny's tail. They're kind of like similar size, actually. Whereas our friend Bandit had like a very, very like larger head and then a very, very thin tail. Allison says he looks like spaghetti. Nice. Okay, Zahara says he looks like a tiger, kind of. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, he's got that orange and, and black and brown thing going on. Nice. Any more observations about Kenny? Any more observation about Kenny? One thing I noticed about Kenny is that his head is kind of like flat on its underside. And he just has like a different shape. It's kind of like a, it kind of comes down into a wedge, his head. He's also a little slower. That's something else I noticed about Kenny. He's not as like nimble and fast as Bandit. He's a little more of a chiller. A little more of a chiller. Okay. Those are great observations. Well done. Now we're going to move on to remember things that you're curious about. So um, questions that you have about Kenny. What do you wonder about Kenny? Why does Kenny have these colors? That's one thing I, I wonder. Isaac said he's more calm than Bandit. Yeah. Okay. So questions, things you wonder about Kenny. Does Kenny bite? Okay, good question. Julia says, what kind of snake is he? Mm-hmm. What else do you wonder about Kenny? Hey, guys. I'm in a program. You're good. It's uh, He's friendly. His name's Kenny. All right. What does he eat? How did you find him? Where does Kenny live? What does he eat? What kind of snake is he? Okay, those are all great questions. Maybe a couple more questions. Why does Kenny look like tiger spaghetti? That's a favorite. Why does Kenny look like tiger spaghetti? <laughs> I love that. That's a that's a great question. Is he a meat eater? Okay, also an excellent question. All right, we're gonna do the true false thing again. Are you ready? All righty. Kenny is orange because Kenny likes eating shrimp. True or false? Kenny is orange because Kenny likes eating shrimp. True or false? Okay, Isaac says false. Ellie says false. Anessa says false. Zaharis is false. Allison says true. True or false, Kenny is orange because he likes eating shrimp. Juliet says true. Lucia says false. Okay, so that one would be false. Kenny is orange because of camouflage. Kenny's blending in with his environment, his habitat. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Kenny is a Kenyan sand boa. Okay, so Kenya, Kenyan. Kenya is in Africa, and some of the sands in Africa are orange. Okay, so Kenny blends in with his environment by being orange. Okay, and Essa says also, he's not a sea creature. That's right. He lives in like the driest climates on earth. All righty. Okay, true or false? Kenny's tail looks like Kenny's head because Kenny lost part of his tail when he was younger. True or false, Kenny's head is about the same look as Kenny's tail because Kenny lost some of his tail when he was younger. Okay, Lucia says true, Zahara says true, Isaac says false. True or false, Kenny's tail looks like Kenny's head because when he was younger, he lost part of his tail. 
Anessa says true. Juliet says true. Allison says true. Okay, here's the truth, folks. Kenny never had an accident, fortunately. He's a healthy snake and it never happened to him. But the reason they have tails that look like their, their heads is because Kenny often burrows himself in the sand. And I'll show you that when I put Kenny back in his enclosure. He burrows himself in the sand. And so it's actually an adaptation, something that allows a creature to survive. It allows Kenny to survive because if a creature is looking to eat a snake and he sees this part, his tail sticking out, he's not going to know if that's the head or the tail. And a snake obviously bites from their head. So if you don't know where a snake is going to strike from, then it brings about the element of surprise. Okay, so it's an adaptation that Kenny has to surprise his prey and predators, actually. So things that he's going to eat won't know what side of the snake he's coming from because his eyes blend in so well with the rest of his body. And also things that are trying to eat him won't know which side is going to strike from either. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, true or false? Kenny is full grown. True or false? Kenny is full grown. He's as big as he's going to get. Ellie says true. He's as big as he's going to get. Julia says false. Isaac says true. Lucia says false. Allison says true. Anessa says false. Wow, jury's out on this one. We have a lot of different responses for sure. Julia says totally false. True or false, he is as big as he's going to get. Okay, that one is true. Kenny is full grown. Kenyan Sambos do not get this big. Okay. Um, last one, last one. Uh, um, Kenyan sand boas. Okay, so if Kenny was a female, um, Kenyan sand boas give live birth. Okay, they don't lay eggs. They give live birth. True or false? True or false, Kenyan sand boas give live birth. Like little baby snakes just come out of mama snake. Sahara says, False. Allison says false. Lucia says false. Ellie says false. Nessa says true. Isaac says false. Anonymous attendee says false. So mysterious. Anonymous attendee. Okay. True or false? Kenyan Samboas give live birth. Little baby snakes just pop out of mama snake. Okay. Midori says false. That one is actually true as well. Kenyan sand boas, like all boas, give a live birth, which is kind of crazy to think about because we typically think of snakes as laying eggs, but boas will actually give live birth. So little baby snakes will come out of mama snake, just kind of trippy for us to think about. All right. So the last thing I'm going to show you with Kenny um, is Kenny going back into his, his enclosure. And you'll see what I mean that Kenny likes to go into the sand and blend in with his, his environment. You ready? Okay, so I got some like orange sand, like his habitat. He still wants to say hello. All right, let's see if he'll go in. You can really see his like wedge like head there. All right, there he goes. He's digging. Kenny likes to dig.
already while we're watching this does anyone have any last questions that i can answer before we sign off any last questions about uh kenny i know uh i think julia you keep asking what is what does he eat kenny is also like bandit and kenny uh is a carnivore only eats meat like all snakes and kenny will go after small rodents like mice okay any last questions about our friend bandit or uh kenny or any other just like general snake questions that i can answer okay great question zahara can he breathe under the sand um yeah he has an amazing ability to breathe even under the sand someone says his cage is so tiny you're right this one is tiny and this is just his travel cage so he gets put in one that's way bigger it's just so he can be transported easily because i don't want to transport the big cage that he lives in allison says does bandit eat rattlesnakes or just defend from them bandit can eat rattlesnakes if he wants she wants but uh, probably smaller ones because Bandit's not super huge. And does Bandit eat other family members and or other snakes? Bandit is a king snake. Therefore, Bandit does eat other snakes. Are there snakes in Sunnyvale? Um, probably. Snakes live in a lot of places. And they really help with the rodent population. So if you did not know, rodents, like mice and rats, for instance, um, are big vectors of disease, which means they carry disease. Um, and it's a good thing that we have snakes because snakes keep the rodent population in check. So you probably have snakes there. And if there aren't snakes in Sunnyvale, then there probably should be snakes because snakes are a good thing. They really, really help us humans by um, depleting the rodent population. Okay, someone asked, are there poisonous or dangerous snakes in Northern Illinois? I don't know the Northern Illinois uh, landscape that well. My gut reaction, uh, my gut thought is no. Um, I don't think there are any poisonous snakes. But, you know, any snake can be, can be dangerous just as any dog can be dangerous or any human can be dangerous. If it feels cornered and it might get aggression, aggressive, pardon me, just like any other creature. So just real quick, you can see uh, our friend Kenny is nearly disappeared, almost all disappeared into the sand. How cool is that? Alrighty, so my friends, um, that was our Junior Rangers program. And um, if you're checking in on our Facebook program, then um, one thing you can do is I'll send you your badge if you answer this question. And this question is what kind of snake is our friend Bandit? What kind of snake is our friend Bandit? Um, I'm glad you all joined me today. Before we leave, I want to do the, of course, Junior Rangers Pledge. And so to do our Junior Rangers Pledge, I want you to um, put uh, your uh, plug your nose with your right hand and then grab your left ear with your left hand and you're going to say, repeat after me. Okay, repeat after me. I, state your name, promise to treat the earth. And all living things with care and respect. Be careful of what I do and how it affects others. And learn about the importance of nature and our heritage. All right. So thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Alec. I'm here at Rancho Del Oso in Big Basin Redwood State Park. This is actually my last program here at Rancho Del Oso. Someone else will be taking over very soon. So that's all. Thanks so much. Um, if you have any questions about the snakes or the program, you can email me um, or actually email the park directly, and then they'll be able to answer your questions. And our email is rdo.parks at gmail.com. So it's rdo.parks parks at gmail.com so if you joined us today um, and you're here for most of the program i will be sending you your junior rangers badge so thanks so much for joining us and i hope you have an absolutely wonderful day take care